Welcome back to Cinema Scoop. Today we'll recap Extraction 2, the sequel to Netflix's most viewed original film ever. We will uncover Tyler Rake's next steps after his near fatal mission in Bangladesh in Extraction 1. Spoilers ahead. The movie begins where we left off in part one. Tyler is shot in the neck and falls off the bridge into the water. He washes ashore and a little girl finds him. She alerts soldiers who immediately take him to seek medical attention. They transport him to a hospital and we see Nick watching over him as he lies unconscious. She refuses to give up on him and stays by his side until he wakes from his coma nine months later. His disappointment is apparent as he preferred to die than to live as a shell of the man he once was. She tells him that he fought his way back to life but now must find out why. In Kajori, Georgia, we see Zurab, leader of the Nagazi, tending to his livestock. His uncle and advisor Avtandal enters bearing bad news. There has been a 10-year extension added to Zurab's brother David's prison sentence. In the Tkachari prison, we see David for the first time. In an attempt to undo this sentence, Zurab meets with the governor who signed off on it. The governor explains that he's been pressured by the Americans for justice since David pushed a DEA agent off a roof. Zurab tells the governor that he was tasked by his father with the responsibility of taking care of his brother since he was young. The governor reminds him of all he's done for David, opposing his extradition to the States and allowing his family to live in the prison with him. Zurab retaliates with a reminder of who put the governor in office, but when he continues to refuse, Zurab and his gang kill him and his bodyguards. At the hospital, Tyler meets with Yaz and Nick, who take him to a cabin in Austria where he can live out his retirement. They bring over his dog, and Nick hands him his personal belongings, stating that his entire life fits in one little box. She recommends that he changes that, and they leave him there. He settles in before going through his stuff, reminiscing on a drawing of his son. We see a video of his ex-wife and son playing at the beach. In the prison, David heads over to his family. His wife, Ketavan, tells him not to wake the kids, since they have trouble sleeping in there. While they argue, their son Sandro eavesdrops. She tells David that it's hard for them there, but he believes that their son needs to grow up hard. She suggests that they hide elsewhere because even though his brother Zurab is protecting them in the prison, she does not want Sandro to become a part of the Nagazi. He feels offended by her comments and slaps her as he tells her their kids would not miss her if he got rid of her and raised them on his own. Sandro, overhearing their altercation, heads to her to comfort her after David leaves. He believes his father is right that he must grow up hard and become Nagazi. Tyler returns home to meet a stranger sitting outside his house. He tells him to leave after the man refuses to say who he is. The man proposes a job to Tyler, who initially refuses before he finds out that his ex-wife has requested him specifically for the task. Inside, the man shares details about the job. Ketevin is locked in the prison with her kids and wants out. He informs him about David and Zurab, who fled to Armenia to escape war in Georgia. They began their life of crime selling drugs, then upgrading to murder for hire before building their Nagazi empire back in Georgia. The loyalty within the group is strong, and so he warns Tyler that the Nagazi is a force to be reckoned with. He further states that there is a gang war occurring within the prison, one side against David, but both sides would want to kill Tyler if they find out he's there. So he must complete the mission quietly to avoid alerting the Nagazi and the gang. His mission will begin in six weeks, and he assures Tyler that he will meet with him after it's all done, assuming he hasn't gotten himself killed. Later, Tyler informs Nick about the mission, believing that this will help him find out why he's fought his way back to life. However, he doesn't give details about his relation to the people involved. We see him training and preparing over the next six weeks, gaining his strength and skills back before embarking on the mission. In the prison, a bribed officer leaves clues on the wall to Ketevin's holding cell and shuts off the lights before letting Tyler in. Tyler follows the clues quietly until he finds her with David sleeping close by. She wakes the kids and gets them ready. Sandro calls to his father, believing that Tyler is here to break them all out together, but they immediately quiet him. Ketevin lies to him that David will meet them outside and they sneak out, but her daughter, Nina, drops her singing toy, which wakes a prisoner. He whistles to signal everyone, and chaos erupts as they try to escape. A group of prisoners attack Tyler, but he fights them off and Yaz directs him to the coal chutes. Tyler sends the kids up through the chute first before David finds them. During their scuffle, Ketevin tries to help, but David overpowers her. Nearing the end of their fight, Tyler gains the upper hand, stabbing David in the neck and killing him. Nick makes it to the coal chute, but another group of prisoners appears, and Tyler and Ketevin run away to escape them. They get to the common yard, where a gang war is raging. Some of the gang members attack them and try to capture Ketevan, but Tyler fights them off before almost being knocked out. He eventually gains control again, and continues to fight the gang until he secures Ketevan. They reach an exit where Nick and Yaz are waiting for them. After intercepting Nagazi radio signals, Yaz informs Tyler that the Nagazi are on their way, heavily armed. They get to their escape vehicles, and as they leave, Sandro questions his father's whereabouts. 
Kedevin again lies to him that Davit will meet them later. As they drive to their getaway train, Tyler orders the kids to put on bulletproof vests. Just then, Nagazi soldiers appear immediately trying to take them down. They take out some members of Tyler's team, and Sandro questions why the Nagazi are attacking them, wondering if they're not aware of who is in the car. Before making it to the train, Tyler's car is blown up from below and Nina fractures her arm. Nick and Yaz return to cover them from the gunfire and they run to the train. After boarding, Yaz tends to Nina's arm, and Tyler takes down the Nagazi following closely behind the train. Some Nagazi soldiers infiltrate the train and attack Nick, who gets stabbed in the process. She overpowers them as more soldiers blow openings into the train. Tyler takes them down as well and checks on Nick after she doesn't respond over comms. He takes down the last of the Nagazi on their tail and orders Nick to stop the train. However, she informs him that the brakes are damaged and they brace for impact. Before Tyler can secure himself, the train flips off the rails after crashing into the end of the line. Later, Avtandil consoles Zurab as he has a memory of him and his brother when they were younger. Zurab meets with some Nagazi soldiers who inform him that the team who attacked them were highly skilled. They believe it may be one of the many groups that wanted to exact revenge on David and the Nagazi, but Zurab senses that there's something else afoot. Tyler and the others make it out of the wrecked train and meet with the rest of Nick's team, but Sandro refuses to go any further until he finds out what happened to his father. After a bit of arguing, Kedevin confesses that he's not coming. Sandro questions if his father is dead, and she doesn't respond but tries to console him. He pushes her off and takes his anger out on Tyler, knowing he killed his father. Tyler holds him back, informing him that he had to kill David, or else his mother would have died instead. He refuses Kedavan when she reaches out to him and walks away. Zurab stares at David's body, laughing as he remembers how his father beat him for not protecting David from bullies. His ears were damaged during the abuse, and due to loss of hearing, he needs hearing aids. On a plane, Yaz requests a medical team to meet them in Vienna. Sandro overhears this as he's sitting close by, and when Yaz leaves to get him something to eat, he steals the phone and hides in the bathroom. Nick hears Tyler speaking Georgian to Kedavan, and she she asks him how long he's known the language. Realizing that Nick doesn't know of the connection, Kedevin tells her who she is to Tyler, which surprises her. In the bathroom, Sandro calls Zurab. He ignores Zurab's questions about their whereabouts and asks if David wanted to kill Kedevin. Zurab lies, telling Sandro that Kedevin ordered his father to be murdered so she could take them away. Hearing this, he gives Zurab information about where they're heading to. While talking about his child and ex-wife, Tyler tries to apologize for leaving when his sick son needed him the most. However, Kedevin cuts him off. Off, telling him that watching their child die is the worst thing a parent can endure. Tyler is silenced by this and makes no attempt to say anything more. They make it to the DC Towers in Vienna, where Nina receives medical attention. While Nick's team creates documents and visas for Kedevin and her kids, Nick questions Tyler on why he didn't tell her the truth. She tells him that she needs him to trust her and that she would never have said no to helping him in a situation like this. Shen then leaves to check on Nina and applauds Ketevin for caring for her kids under such conditions. While packing up his equipment, Sandro confronts him about killing his father. He's visibly anxious and Tyler denies being ordered by Ketevan to kill him. He tells Sandro that he was only meant to save them from the prison, but Sandro believes that his father brought them there to protect them from the Nagazi's enemies. Tyler also denies this, stating that David did it as a control tactic to stop Ketevan from taking them away since she did not want her son to become a Nagazi. Sandro is infuriated, believing that a good son should stay with his father. He accuses Tyler of leaving his son, and obviously, affected by his words, Tyler leaves. Zurab gives a speech to the Nagazi, stating that Tyler must die at their hands since he killed members of the Nagazi family. They pledge their lives and loyalty to him, assuring him that they will follow him to the end. Avtandil expresses his disagreement with this, believing that Zurab is throwing their lives away for a fight that won't end well. Zurab reiterates his father's order that he must fight for his brother until his last drop of blood. Tyler meets Sandro on the balcony and talks about the last time he saw his son. Before he left for Afghanistan, he came to the hospital to tell his son goodbye, knowing that there was a possibility he would not be alive when he came back. He tells Sandro that the last thing his son remembers is Tyler walking out on him, but Kedevin didn't do the same. She chose to stay with David to keep them safe, despite how she was treated. He urges Sandro to take care of Kedevin and be there for her the same way she is for him, instead of idolizing a father that has only lied to him. Plagued with regret, Sandro apologizes. Not realizing what he's apologizing for, Tyler tells him it's okay, but Sandro clarifies clarifies that he alerted Zurab, and Tyler looks out into the distance to see a helicopter approaching. He alerts the team and Kedevin of the incoming attack, and we see armed soldiers pouring out of cars below. Nick and Tyler lay out the plan before making a move. Sandro reads through his messages with Zurab, but Kedevin catches him. 
Disappointed by his betrayal, she scolds him for this but is stunned when he tells her the Nagazi are his family. Just then, a helicopter rises into view, opening fire on the entire floor. When it's gone, they head down to the parking garage, planning to escape by car but Sandro runs off. Yaz runs after him alone against Nick's better judgment. We see police arrive on the scene but are immediately shot down by Nagazi soldiers. In the parking garage, the Nagazi fired at Tyler's car before sticking a bomb to the front. Yaz chases after Sandro and is almost shot down by Zurab when they reach the back alley. Sandro weighs his choices as he looks back and forth between Yaz and Zurab but eventually decides to stick with the Nagazi. Nick makes it onto the scene, but a soldier sends a missile her way, causing her car to flip. Yaz pulls her out and Sandro tries to explain to Zurab that Kedavan was only trying to keep them safe and isn't responsible for David's death. Zurab ignores this and puts him in the car before heading after Yaz and Nick. They engage in a standoff before Nick and Yaz escape. Back in the garage, Tyler fights off a few more Nagazi before heading to Nick and Yaz. Zurab orders his soldiers to force them back into the building and they have a shootout before making it back inside. Nick, Tyler, and Yaz agree to meet on the roof, and Zurab orders his men to secure all entrances and exits. In the elevator, Kedavan apologizes to Tyler for the mess she's brought him in, but he assures her that it's okay. While in the car, Sandro asks Avtandil if Zurab will kill his mother. Avtandil tells him coldly that he shouldn't have called in the first place if he wanted his mom to survive. Yaz and Nick make it to the roof to take out the Nagazi soldiers on top while Tyler clears the floors below. Tyler calls Yaz for help, and as he heads down, he's met with gunfire from two soldiers. He kills one, but is severely injured before killing the other. On the roof, a soldier knocks Nick and himself over the edge. They both black out, and Tyler sees that Nick is about to slide off the building. He finishes up, breaks the glass, and catches Nick just in time before she could fall to her death. Zurab finds him and shoots him in the hand, but Tyler still holds strong. Seeing that he cares for Nick enough not to let her go, Zurab directs his aim at her, but she comes to and shoots the glass from underneath him. Her gun jams before she can kill him, and Tyler swings her back onto the floor. He instructs her to secure Ketevin and Nina, while he and Zurab climb back up and engage in combat. On the floor below, Ketevin hides from a giant soldier. However, when she runs by, he hears her and fires at her but runs out of ammo. He turns to an axe, and as he's about to kill her, he refers to her as a traitor. Nick comes just in time, killing him before he can injure Ketevin. Yaz rounds the corner struggling to breathe due to his wounds, but he assures Nick that he's fine, and they head to the roof. Tyler and Zarab continue to tussle before the glass breaks, and Zarab falls through. They all meet on the roof, but before Yaz can make it to the helicopter, Zarab shoots him twice. They narrowly escape, but Yaz's condition concerns Nick. He tells Tyler he can't breathe anymore and eventually succumbs to his wounds. We see Nick wail as the pain from the death of her brother rips through her. Zurab returns to the car and when Sandro asks him what happened, he ignores him. Back at the cabin, Tyler nurses his wounds while Nick cleans up Yaz's body. She cries as she does so, and Tyler comes over to console her. Later that night, Tyler waits outside by the fire for his ex-wife, Mia, to arrive. They stare at each other in silence for a while before Ketevin rushes over to her. They hug and head inside. At Zurab's hideout, Avtandil comes over to speak with him. He believes they should end this now since there's been enough bloodshed. Zurab references his father, to which Avtandil questions where his father and David are now, pointing out that they are no longer around. This infuriates Zurab, and he shoots Avtandil in the stomach killing his last known relative. Seconds before death, we see Avdantil's shock by his nephew's actions. He states that he knew a bullet was meant for him, but not from Zurab's gun. Mia and Tyler finally have their first conversation since their marriage ended. He apologizes for not being there when his son died. She asks his reason why, and he beats around the bush before finally confessing that he felt he couldn't fix it. Just then, he gets a call from Zurab, and they agree to settle this once and for all. Zurab gives him a location, and he prepares to leave. As he's driving off, Nick tries to join, but he refuses to take her with him. When he gets to the airfield, he destroys all vehicles, and Zurab takes Sandro to the church close by. While fighting off a Nagazi soldier, Tyler is shot in the process before killing him. He makes it to the church, struggling with every step. We see Sandro strapped with a bomb while Zurab holds the detonator. Zurab orders Sandro to take Tyler's gun and shoot him with it, but Sandro doesn't have the guts to do so. Zurab decides to get the job done himself, but hears Nick sneak up behind him. He threatens to blow them up if she shoots, so she puts down the gun. Sandro escapes while Zurab's distracted and she shoots at him, but he injures her when he fires back. Tyler attacks him, and they fight with each other. Zurab almost kills him with a saw, but Tyler stabs him in the side with a screwdriver. They continue fighting while Sandro gently removes the bomb strapped to him. He hands the detonator to Nick while apologizing, and she turns it off. Zurab tries to reach for a gun, but Tyler stabs him four times before they both wearily sprawl out on the floor. As Zurab lies there, he professes that he will not stop, and Tyler kills him. He heads over to Nick, while Sandro presses on her wound and the police arrive. 
At Schwartzau Prison, Nick is cuffed to her bed after receiving treatment. Tyler walks the halls of Graz Karlau Prison on his way to speak with Mia. She tells him that Ketavan and her children are in witness protection and have given intel on the Nagazi. However, the government has frozen her assets. He directs Mia to the $1 million stashed away in his cabin and instructs her to give it to them. He thanks her for doing what he couldn't for their son, and she tells him that their son's last memory of him is a hero who's gone off to fight for others. His last words before death were an expression of wanting to be brave like his father. This offers Tyler immense closure and she leaves. As he's being escorted back to his cell, the guards direct him outside to a car that takes him to a secluded area. There he meets with the stranger from before, who offers him a way out of prison. That is, becoming a mercenary again and doing another job. Tyler refuses to do it without Nick, and knowing that he would say that, the stranger had already ordered for her to be brought there as well. He again does not disclose his name, stating that what really matters is who he works for, a gnarly individual that he assures Tyler he'll love. The man walks away, and the movie ends with an expression on Tyler's face that we can easily deduce as an agreement to the offer. Subscribe to CinemaScoop so you never miss the latest movie explanations, reviews, and analyses. Thanks for watching.